Morning class, I'm Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School and today I'm going to show you the difference between a gel and a medium and which one is best for your acrylic painting when you're just getting started. Often people just start with the acrylics and water and try and do their painting just with those alone. Gels are great to add texture to your paintings and mediums help to increase flow and blendability with your acrylics. So the first gel we're going to have a look at is a regular gel. The main difference between gels and mediums is if you're a painter or a pourer. If you're a painter and you want to keep the texture and the brush strokes that are in the paint, then a gel is often your best bet. If you like pouring acrylics and keeping them, them, them thin and getting them to like self level when you paint them out, then um, a medium is often best to use. Essentially all a gel is, is acrylic paint as in acrylic polymer but without the pigment added. So this is a regular gel so that the consistency of this when we have a look at it is quite similar or pretty much similar apart from the extra of having the pigment as normal acrylic paint. So this is some um, CAD red. So when I move the red around with the palette knife it holds quite good peaks on it, you know, quite good texture. And then when we move uh, this gel, it's, it's very similar. It's got slightly more give in it. So if you wanted to um, extend this red, you can just mix the gel into it. Well, you can mix a whole lot. That's what's great about gels is because essentially they're just the acrylic polymer. Um, you can mix as much or as little as you like in with the paint. Um, and it can help your paints go further. So that if you're working on, say, an underpainting, I might add, you know, some binder to it and then paint with this just to block in the colour. But then wait until I'm really sure of the colour before going in with the artist quality paint on top of that. So if you want the paint to go further but still keep this consistency, you can just add regular gel to it. Um, the thing that you'll notice when you look at a label on the gel is it said regular gel and then in brackets it will say semi-gloss. Now this one is an extra heavy gel and you see how this has matte in brackets. So gels usually come in semi-gloss, matte or gloss, and it's entirely up to you which finish you, you like best to work with. So to show you the extra heavy gel, you see how when it comes out of the pot, it's got a lot thicker uh, texture to it. So say that you wanted to build up the texture in the foreground of a painting, you know, you can mix a bit of pigment in with it. You see how it appears to uh, make it paler because of course the medium is white. When it dries off it goes clear so it's not as noticeable. So if I wanted to create texture, you know, in the front of a painting, you know, I could use this extra thick gel and then that would dry off and I can paint on top of that and I've used a very minimal amount of pigment really in comparison to if I use that with pure CAD red which is of course a very expensive pigment. This is Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School. Hi, Romney here at Sleep Pros. Just wanted to show you the latest edition. My newest child is a Spinal Care mattress. This particular baby has uh, pocketed coils throughout, individually wrapped coils. You got the bamboo top, got an inch of memory foam, completely foam encased, very solid edge, and this bed is kind of la creme de la creme. It's really a solid, solid bed. has a nice, soft feel on the top, but not so soft that you're going to feel like the body impressions are going to take over. This one's over 15 inches tall, very high profile mattress, extremely comfortable. Actually, I would have to say in my five years 
uh, being out on my own, this has to be one of the most comfortable beds if you like a little plusher feel. So definitely come on down and try this. We're at 1921 West Florida Avenue in Hemet, 951-925-7769. We'll see ya. Oh yeah, 98 Ford Ranger, 2.5 motor, 8 spark plugs, running sweet, very well taken care of, as you can hear, very good, everything intact. Everything running real good. Nice. Nice. 2.5 motor. Yeah. That's right. 2.5 motor. Ford Ranger. Look at that baby. Solid. Nice. Whole bed, solid, good truck, working condition. Anybody interested? Let me know. Let me know. So you show you the inside. Seats are a little dirty. Motor's running good. No check engine. Everything works. Heat. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Radio. FM, AM. Let's see what we got here. Gucci key chain, holding them like Gucci keys. Gucci down all the time in the summertime. I'm Gucci mine, you would think it was my clothing line. Gucci bandana, Gucci Gucci bandana, Gucci bandana, Gucci Gucci in case you missed it on Instagram, rude, Aida and I just got back from Miami together and we had the best time, minus the fact that we were not 100% ready for bikini season. It was an embarrassment for us, for our families, for our nation. True. So this week we're doing a PSA on how you must get ready for bikini season. Welcome to Domestic Partners, where we talk about food, drink, and all things domestic. This week we're sharing our five tips on how to be prepped, primped, and preened for bikini season. Well, we can't all be perfect like our girl crush, Chrissy Teigen. Oh my God, I love her. There are a few things you can do. Ready, set, let's go. First up, tanning. We're not talking about tanning beds. We're talking about tanning creams and spray tans. Spend a pretty penny and get the good stuff because you will look like a million bucks. Number two, landscaping. Manscaping, whatever you wanna call it. And if you don't know what we're talking about, we're probably talking to you. So just freaking Google it. Number three, skip the loaded nachos for a few weeks and instead stick to a loaded salad like the one Aida just made up. This is low carb, high protein, you'll be full for hours, and it's really satisfying. It's got arugula, oil packed tuna, some avocado, some feta, a little bit of quinoa, and some white beans. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Number four, stock up on your swimwear. This domestic partner of mine taught me a few key things. The most important being, flaunt what you've got and damage control the rest. 
two hard-earned summers working in a bikini shop taught me that gem. And when all else fails, number five is to accessorize. The right beach hat, a good pair of sunglasses, they can take care of a lot. And don't forget about a good sarong. It will cover almost all of the damage. And also, you can just pretend that you're looking like Sophia Loren or some Jackie O for the weekend. This week's Food for Thought is brought to you by Bikini Season. Bikini Season is right around the corner. Sadly, Baskin Robbins is closer. Sorry about it. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Domestic Partners. Be sure to subscribe below to check out new episodes. And if you're really serious about Bikini Season, check out our video on juicing and smoothies because we have two amazing recipes to add to your arsenal. See you next week. Now, we can't all be gorgeous like our girl crush. Just kidding. <laughs> Bikini season is right around the corner. I'm stuck. Okay, sorry. Bikini season is right around the corner.